at factors that affect cardiac output. And stroke volume is one of the two main components. And we're gonna start looking at those components. So end diastolic volume, that is the amount of blood that is in the heart when it's about to contract. That can um, influence stroke volume. And that's gonna occur by changing the force of contraction. So we will look at how this occurs. What's the mechanism by which increased EDV increases the force of contraction? EDV is gonna vary based on how much blood is coming back from circulation. It's kind of where we're going first here. The first thing we're gonna look at for this altering end diastolic volume is called preload. Preload is basically the load that's in the heart before it contracts. So venous return, blood is coming in from circulation. That's what venous return is, the return from the veins. And as that blood enters the heart, it's going to stretch the ventricles. As those ventricles, as the actual muscle tissue stretches, that's gonna cause in, increased force of contraction. This principle is called the Frank Starling Law of the Heart. The idea that when you increase stretch, you increase the force of contraction in response to the increased stretch. It's basically the same idea as a slingshot. The further back you pull the slingshot, the farther the thing travels. This is what the Frank Starling Law of the Heart is, but the same idea happens with the stretching of the heart tissue itself. The consequence of this increased force of contraction is going to be increased stroke volume. So as we have increased end diastolic volume due to increased venous return, we have increased stretch, increased force of contraction, and a larger volume put out by the heart. Um, venous return can be affected by either how much blood is in circulation. So if there's blood loss, venous return is gonna decrease, decreasing stroke volume ultimately. Exercise can increase venous return and thereby increase stroke volume. So this is um, a relevant thing to have happen. In contrast to preload, so preload is the, basically the due to end diastolic volume. So end diastolic volume is this preload, loading of the ventricles before contraction. In contrast to that, there's also something called afterload. And these terms actually make some sense. Afterload is going to be after contraction and it's the resistance that's vascular resistance after the blood has been ejected out of these great vessels here. So it's the load the heart has to eject against. It has to push past this resistance. It's going to be um, related to the aorta and then pulmonary trunk. So heart has to push against this. That's typically what resistance means, right? So as resistance increases, as afterload increases, increased afterload, due to increased resistance, um, either due to the amount of blood there or um, damage to the, the valves, increased afterload is going to result in increased end systolic volume not all the blood's gonna get out of the heart. So that's going to decrease stroke volume. 